welcome to the April 23rd Trips and Traps. Andy Sterling, Richard Migliori. And things are starting to heat up for Trips and Traps as turf racing is back in the fold. And, of course, we've got four turf races to look at. You know, it's funny. I didn't even realize that until you said it, that we're all on the turf for these races. There are some trips we want to talk about. Some are just bad luck, and some are just the way it goes in racing. We will turn our attention to our first race, and this is the fifth race from April 15th. And I really wanted to get Richie's take on that, this race. That's why I'm doing it. The Three Idle American, he is a really neat horse that I like a lot, but I also think there are times when he's a horse that makes a rider look bad. He, he's a difficult horse to ride, and, and after watching this replay, I went back and watched several of his replays, and this is something he'll do. He, he'll be almost a little bit lethargic the first 100 yards, and then once he kind of gets in his rhythm, He's a pretty strong horse. He grabs the bridle, and he basically takes advantage of Angel Cruz here and starts to run off with him. Now, of course, Andy, it didn't help that the pace was glacial. Well, that's, I think, the problem here, because Angel does a good job getting him back there, and he doesn't want to run up on the heels of the seven horse, so he eased me outside thinking he can use the eight for cover, and I guess the horse had other things on his mind, Richie. Yeah, I mean, he, he's just a horse that's difficult to ride. He's got a, a, a tough mouth. You can just see here, he, he knows he doesn't want to make this early wide middle move but the horse is running away with him at this point and he's done this in the past even when they haven't gone this slow no i know he did it at belmont um in his first start before angel cruz rode him at aqueduct when he won and you know just to make the point angel cruz rode this horse to a victory at aqueduct and gave him as picture perfect a ride as you could give and that was when he first came around here one of his first turf rides so it's not as though he's a bad rider doesn't understand the horse i just think this horse has a mind of his own and there are times when he takes off. Well, exactly. And, and I think probably being a little bit fresh back on the grass, he probably got a little bit excited. And the other thing, too, and it's interesting from a pedigree standpoint, being by Quiet American, I've seen this a lot with the Quiet Americans. If you don't have to touch their mouth, they settle well. I remember Hidden Lake was like that. But if you had to grab her, she would grab you back. And he got in a position when they were going slow. He had to take a hold of him. And then he actually got ranked then. Well, I mean, is it a situation where you can look back and think, what was I able to do in the other race where he won and do that the next time? Because I know this horse is only one at Aqueduct. I believe this horse can win in the turf at Belmont. I do, too. But I, and, and this was my question. I was thinking about it watching this race yesterday. Don't you think he'd be a candidate to turn back? I'd rather see this horse go six or seven furlongs on the turf because they're going to run away from him. He doesn't have the speed to keep up, and then he'll be able to finish. I'll say seven because I've turn backs to six furlongs very, very rarely work, unless it's a proven type sprinter. You need to have okay. speed in those races. You know, it's something that killed me. When I first, when, when we first started running on a turf sprints, I thought, wow, tur dirt, turn backs on dirt are good. They're going to be better on turf. And I just kept getting turn backs and losing and losing and losing. And finally, I had to admit, it doesn't work. But seven furlongs, it'll work. And you're probably right. If he could find the right seven furlong race for this horse, it would be perfect for him. Yeah, I just think it'll make it, the, the rider's life so sure. much easier to be able to just put your hands down. He'll get out footed. And then when you put the bit in his mouth, he'll really finish. It's too bad they don't have six and a half down the hill because that's the kind of horse that excels down the hill, horses that get rank. Yeah, and he is a really, really neat horse and a talented horse on turf and dirt. He needs the right situation. I think his own quirks get in the way of him winning. Yeah. But just because the only four races he ever won with the turf at Aqueduct, I, don't, I still believe he'll win at Belmont. And maybe he'll get a chance at seven. Yeah, I, I, I think Belmont would actually suit him even better. It's funny that he's only won here at Aqueduct, but, you know, you know, we talk about trips, and sometimes it is the rider's fault. This time, I just got to give it, this horse is difficult to ride. I, I don't think I'd want to ride him. I think any time, most times when he's lost, it's been, when he's done things like that, I just think the rider couldn't get in his way. We'll turn our attention to another turf race, and this was the last race on that same day, April 15th, and we want to talk about the third place finisher, the 11 plundering, and it's actually amazing that this horse finishes third when you consider his trip, and this was first time on the turf. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a shame. And you could see when he left the gate, he kind of got lost out there. He was out in an open field by himself. He broke out towards empty space. Cornelio's trying to do the right thing here and get back to tuck in. But you couldn't anticipate after the first quarter in 23 and 4, Andy, they would back it up to 50 and 3 fifths. And that's what creates most of the trouble he has. I think you're right. And I'll bet you, Richie, they were really going fast that first eighth or so. So that's why there's able to be separation. And the slowdown probably started right at this point because Cornelio's trying to tuck him in. He obviously doesn't want to get into this ridiculous situation. He's too good a rider for that. He wants to tuck him in. They probably really slowed it down as they hit the turn. Well, it, it, exactly. And you could see he almost fit inside of that horse, just inside of him. And then they backed up so much to him that he wound up on that horse's heels.
and he had to swing out to the clear. Now, once he's flushed out of his cover and that horse is daylight, now he's dragging him up and also the pace moderated so much. Yeah, I mean, if you watch it, Richie, it's not as though he's even really dropped his hands. I mean, this horse, he's not, I mean, he's not over-restraining him. You wouldn't want him to do that. What's amazing is all of the stuff that transpires, this horse never stops moving forward. No, he, and he, he, that's the thing. Mid-stretch, you go, well, if he throws in the towel, right. and he's still a horse you want to follow back. But the fact that he hung in all the way through the wire bodes well for him going forward. I think this is a little bit problematic, though, uh, of the races I've seen on the turf since we've gotten back on the, on the turf here at Aqueduct. The pace of almost every single race has been very, very slow. I'm not seeing any real paces develop. Well, we see this over and over and over again, and I don't know why people are so afraid of speed and using a horse's speed as a weapon. It's not as though every horse that goes to the lead collapses, but people are afraid to allow horses to run early in these races, and it just can, it, it, it creates bunching in them, and it creates untrue results a lot of the time. Well, yeah, and it limits your options. As a rider, you know, you get caught in a position and basically now you're dealt a hand that you're probably not comfortable with. Now, I'm not saying that was the case here with Cornelio because I do think that horse breaking from the outside did get lost a little bit. His focus, he almost was like, well, where am I? And then he realized he was in a race and then he got in the, involved. I think the next race we're going to look at really illustrates just how dangerous speed is and position is everything. Yeah, no, no, I agree, especially in those smaller fields in situations in this one. And Plunder is an unlucky horse, and we'll turn our attention to that next race, and Plundering is going to win going forward. This is the Woodhaven, the fifth race on April 18th, and the two chief kitten gets in trouble in the stretch, and we'll talk about that later. I also want to talk about A. Campari. I just feel like A. Campari is a horse that got a little unlucky in here, and he had coming off a win down at Gulfstream where he had this crazy wide trip. I think this horse, A. Campari, has ability. He just needs to learn to settle a little bit or get a better trip. Well, I think he's one dependent on pace, too, because he was a little bit off the bridle. Channing Hill went to ride him, and now he gets in the bridle, and the pace moderates so much. Now, these are good horses, so, you know, they go a half and 50 and 3. You can't expect that you're going to be able to catch them flying from behind. And you can see here, a, a Campari is rank, and now he's flushed out of the, the cover, and he's wide, and, and just an impossible trip on this turf course. He's finished. At this point, the race is over for A. Campari, and it's because, you're right, they're going slow, because you watch what happens. He now ends up behind Chief Kitten, and that's actually almost behind the spot he already was, but he had to get forced out and go four wide, so he's already expended energy to go backwards. Well, you know, it reminds me of like that that short track ice skating racing they do when they when when they when whoever's got inside position cuts the corner and gets that's the same thing. You're wide on these turns and whoever's on the fence gets to cut the corner and uh, moves into that position. And now he's wide every step of the way with with, with no pace to run at. And the two horses with position are going to run one two around the racetrack with the horse second getting up with a real heads up ride because uh, Manny Franco put vision perfect in the race. No, I agree. It's just. A it's about getting your position going forward from the start. And it, I don't think there's anything Shani could have done with Akampari because he's not that kind of racehorse to be up close. But you have to come out of the gate looking for a position. I think Vision Perfect just having more speed. Akampari is badly compromised. Now going to Chief Kitten. Um, I want you to talk about it. What's going through Rod's mind at this point? Well, he's got horse. I mean, they're running in front of him, though. And now there, there's a little bit of breakaway here where, where the chute joins the main Show track. Down. And I thought he was trying to duck into that empty space and get through there and be able to come out because the fence is going to come back out to you. And it, you can, if your horse is running enough and the horses in front of you aren't running as fast as these horses were, to get in and out of the spot. But basically, you leave the course proper and trying to duck into that space. You'll what, see him leave. Look when you watch this horse when they go to the break. You're going to see this horse, as Richie just pointed out, leave the course. Yeah, I mean, here, like, the, the leader's on the fence. Now, he ducks into that right empty in space. But that's because the rail falls away. But you see the rail comes back out, and now he runs out of space. It only works if the horse in front of you isn't really running and your horse is really running. You made a mention of something that really kind of, I think, puts it in proper perspective. It's like you're on a one-lane highway, and you've got oncoming traffic, and you duck out from behind the car going slower in front of you, and you've got to pass him before traffic runs back into you. That's exactly the situation there. Yeah, and I'm surprised that Arad got in that situation because he knew they were going slowly in front of him, and he had to realize the horse in front of him were not going to go slow enough for him to scoop by him on the inside. Now, I know he was a victim of circumstance, but that was a risky spot he was in. Oh, it was a very risky spot, but I think it was a desperation move because he had no other options, and he had no other options 
because he didn't have his position going forward. Yeah, and I mean, the whole, everything we've talked about in this race, a Kapari Chief Kitten, is a function of the slow pace. And Vision Perfect and Manny Franco were able to take advantage of it, and also Maiden Perfect to finish second with Junior Alvarado. A absolutely. And, and again, we've seen it time and time again. They'll jump out of the gate, even a race where they'll go a little bit quicker the first furlong or two, and then it's like everybody just pulls up. I know up. what I would do if I had one of these horses. In all seriousness, I'd find a rabbit. I don't understand what happened to rabbits. Spread the field out. Right. Put some pace in there. Right. I agree with you. I'm not saying the Vision Perfect isn't good enough to beat these horses, but I'd like to see both of these horses get a chance in a more fairly run race. Well, Vision Perfect's a good horse. Yeah. Who got a really good trip. Right, absolutely. And you can't beat a good horse who's getting a better trip than you're getting, especially when it's playing into his hands. One more race to talk about, and that is the last race from April 18th. And we want to talk about a horse, the Catman Can, who miraculously finishes a close third in this race. He was best, Richie. He's the 10 horse. He, he was best. And you're going to see he's going to hop at the break there. He started up in the air, kind of caught himself and jumped out of the gate. So, fair enough. He got left. But... This trip was, I, I think, more because the rider taking too much hold of him. You could see him fighting and throwing his head around. At some point, you have to allow your horse to get comfortable and go forward. And it was as though this rider was intent on taking this horse back out of the field completely. It's like he wanted to get as far away from the horse as he could be in case the horse ran off a couple lengths on him. He wouldn't go up on the heels of other horses. But you can't go into a race with that kind of mentality. He already broke slowly. He had room on the inside to find a tuck. And he just absolutely drags this horse out of the race and gave him an even larger handicap than he got from the start, Richie. Well, you're just giving him even more to do and and basically it's a little bit hard to understand because turf racing is about being in close with other horses your horse isn't having to deal with kickback you want to be up on heels now I, I try to be very fair about riders and I'll pick out just like we did in a few of the early races situations where it's just not the riders fault it's the hand that was dealt now this horse wasn't dealt a great hand when he hopped at the break but it was compounded by the riders actions after that yeah, there's no question about it and, and, and it's like he wanted to be in the position as far out as he could be and all things considered it's amazing that he puts in the run because here he is dead last. This is another race. There he went 25 and 1, 51 and 4, 117. Now, to be fair, it was a 154 final time for Milo Nate, but still, they were not exactly moving up front, and he's still out of the picture at this point as they're almost turning for home. It's amazing, Richie. Well, it, it, it was interesting watching it when they started to accelerate into the turn. He kind of almost got left behind because it was like, oh, now I got to get going too. And now he has to angle out, which he did okay. I mean, he, he did kind of save some ground in the stretch and came out. But you just gave this horse entirely too much to do. He would have had to have been so much the best to win this race under these circumstances. And he did good to just be, be beaten just about a length. I would say it's a brutal, brutal beat if you need this horse for second, the exacta. But I'm not really sure because the truth is he should have won. Obviously, the nose bob for second was a brutal beat, but the reality was he shouldn't have finished second in this race. He should have won, and I didn't. I thought the horses around one, two, the favorites were the right horses. There's no sour grapes horse. This horse was just best. No, he, he was the best horse. He should have won. And the thing is, is you, you, you see this kind of time and time again from this rider, Anuel Beato. He, he's just a bit too heavy-handed. He's always in the horse's mouth, and you'll see, instead of steadying off the heels quietly and just easing back to a spot, he's constantly taking so much hold the horse is throwing his head. And when they talk about a rider having good hands, there's always a break point, a, a, a certain amount of pressure a horse can take on his mouth before he's going to throw his head. When a rider has good hands, he feels when that, where that break point is, and he gives in before he ever gets to it. Ramon Dominguez comes to mind. Right. Julie Crone, another rider who had a very good ability to get a horse to settle like yeah, that. Yeah, her, her gift was more just getting horses to, to stay quiet, where a horse could get keen with Ramon and he could take a hold of him, but never get to that break point. It's amazing how you never saw a horse get ranked for Ramon Dominguez. And as you know, you can't always keep him from getting rank. No, and, and, and to be fair, I think some horses did get ranked, but he was so smooth about it that he never got to that point where it was so glaring where a horse would have to throw his head and lose all his momentum. He could get him to that point and then feel like, oh, I can't take any more, and he would give in. Everything with horses is a give and take. Well, in that case, there was very little give and a lot of take. We can always use your help. It's trips and traps at nyrink.com.